Hi guys, today our topic is getting out of the matrix. And someone may ask, why do we even need to get out of the matrix? What is this all about? Why do we have to develop our consciousness, elevate our vibrations? What is this thing anyway? Well guys, for many people who are in a state of sleep, because a living being is in the matrix, is in a sleeping condition, it perceives illusion as a reality. But even in this illusion, to achieve something you have to exert tremendous effort, because nothing comes easy. Everywhere you have to invest sweat, blood and suffering until you reach your goal. You'll expend gallons of vital energy. Nothing is just given for granted. Some are given everything from birth. They are born as a son of some important government official, and they have an easy right. They have everything. Their parents have a bank account, and the parents provide them with good material wealth, and everything is fine for them. And another person is born somewhere in working class neighborhood, and the parents struggle to find money for their child's education, and try to escape poverty. And overall, everything is achieved with great difficulty, everything is achieved with great effort. Sometimes I also watch channels of other yogis, in particular there is a Russian speaking yogi, Alexei. Here is his channel, and I like his idea that there is karmic summer and karmic winter. I shall explain what it is. And in principle I share this point of view, cause it's all confirmed in ancient yogic texts. Why is it that one person, no matter what they do, is always lucky? Everything goes well for them. Wherever they invest their energy and efforts, everything succeeds. As they say, they live and drink the honey. But another person, despite putting in tremendous effort, nothing works out for them. Problems end and new problems arise. So guys, the Christ spoke. There is a time to scatter stones and a time to gather them. And what does that mean? There is a period of asketism. And there is a period when you reap the fruits of your asketism. Asketism is a cultivation of piety. It is when you sow the seeds of piety and by living a righteous life, you create virtuous karma. But when you do something negative, you accumulate negative karma, which also bears its fruits in the form of deprivation, suffering, poverty, disabilities, mental problems, psychological suffering and illnesses. All of these are the results of accumulating negative karma. And there are also the results of our righteous actions, our piety, which come in the form of good social position, a good education, a beautiful appearance, and overall material well-being, where you don't need money, you have everything, and you are born into a well-off materially secured family. You have a good education because your parents provided it. In general, you lack nothing. And guys, this is karmic summer. It is when you enjoy the results of your past righteous actions, which come back to you in the form of all these material bonuses. So guys, what is a karmic winter? On the contrary, when you are born and have to achieve everything with great difficulty, because it's the time of karmic winter, when you lack the virtuous fruits of your activities, and it is a time of deprivation. Fate does not give you anything. You are supposed to perform ascetic practices, cause you have already exhausted the results of your past piety in previous lives. That's why in this life you have to put in tremendous effort to achieve something. Let's say one person can spend thousand dollars just to have breakfast at a cafe, while another person will struggle to earn hundred dollars a month, perhaps working on a truck, transporting reeds in the mountains. So guys, the one who can afford a thousand dollars breakfast at a cafe, that guys is a karmic summer. Everything goes well for them. Wherever they go, everything goes smoothly. Everything is green light for them. That's summer guys. That's karmic summer where you don't have to exert yourself much. And everything is given to you by the God and everything is good in your life. And such people think they are so lucky and look down upon those who struggle for everything. They look down on ordinary people, they feel superior themselves. All of this is the result of a short memory, we don't remember our past lives. We think we only live one life, so we are willing to step on everybody's head just to achieve our desires. And it seems like 
our material prosperity will last forever. And due to their spiritual blindness, they don't understand that they are simply depleting their piety. Sooner or later, in this life or in the next, their piety will be exhausted and they will face the fate of being in the shoes of those whom they despise. Because wealth should be spent for the benefit of others, then it will multiply. But if you spend everything on yourself, on your false prestige, you deplete your piety. And this creates an undesirable future, leading to poverty and suffering in future lives. That's why it happens that millionaires go bankrupt and end their lives in debt, or they become alcoholics or die from drug overdoses. All of this is the result of past actions, and those who now easily get everything later heavily struggle for existence. They have to fight tooth and nail. They have to snatch everything from fate. Look at these countries. People are simply starving there. They have no infrastructure. They have shorter lives. No communication. Nothing. Toilets are just holes in the ground. People simply exist, survive. And to them, hundreds of dollars a month seems like a huge amount of money. This, guys, is karmic winter. It is when you have to live and need poverty. It is the negative karma of your past lives. And now, when the situation is not in your favor, you have to go through ascetic practices. Ascetic practices are difficulties and in inconveniences, limitations that you go through in order to achieve your goal. But instead of practicing ascetism, you engage in meaningless activities, steal from people, try to profit off others, or engage in other unhelpful activities. In other words, you worsen your already depressing situation even more. And guys, all of this is severely punished in the matrix. By acting in this way, you create negative karma. You create a negative trail, and then you get tangled up in it, and can't break free from this quadmire of negativity. Instead of working off your negative energy debts, you accumulate new negativity. That's why, guys, it's very difficult to break free from this state. The only way to break free from this state is through yoga, through asceticism. When you realize your situation, turn to God and try to lead a pious, righteous life. Then in future lives, you have a chance that you will receive the results of your righteous actions in the form of a good social position, material prosperity, well-being, a beautiful body, a good family, a prosperous country, and more. And if a yogi doesn't achieve the ultimate goal of yoga at the end of his life, then he goes to higher realms, spends a significant amount of time there, and then he comes back to earth and is born into a family of aristocrats with wealthy, prosperous parents, in order for him to be able to practice yoga again. And this stage is called karma yoga. In other words, yoga requires a certain piety to engage in it, because those who are engaged in heavy physical labor find it difficult to practice yoga. Because they don't have time for it, they are busy struggling for survival, and these two guys is negative karma. When you are forced to work hard your whole life just to eat, just to feed your family. Look at the abandoned cities, where people live in certain areas without even a police presence. They are left to fend for themselves. They rob people on the streets, engage in theft, drug trafficking and prostitution. Drug addicts lie around here and there. They live in such hellish conditions. And they don't even realize that their living conditions are hellish, because their consciousness is such that the external world is just a reflection of the consciousness of these individuals. Because a normal person would not want to live in such conditions. They would find the strength within themselves and break free from that environment. But these people live and for them it's normal. These guys is the result of their low consciousness, because our consciousness determines our existence. They are somehow trying to improve their well-being at the expense of others, but it only worsens their situation. And apart from the poverty, they have nothing to look forward to in the future. Poverty and other negative consequences of their bad actions. They already live in areas where there are simply abandoned houses where no one wants to buy land because no wealthy person want to live among the destitute. Because the destitute are envious, and wealthy people do not settle in destitute areas. 
That's why areas with high concentration of destitute people become ghettos. People move away from there and only criminals, drug addicts and such remain. And this is the future of these people. They cannot accumulate righteousness because they are surrounded by this environment. They only worsen their situation because they have the mindset of criminals and the destitute and this mindset creates a program for their future where they'll be born into the same environment and further sink into degradation. Therefore, look in poor areas. People have children there. They live there on fifty, hundred dollars a month, and yet they have multiple children. They don't understand that they're just creating and perpetuating poverty. Why create a family? Why have children if you cannot provide for them? If you cannot give them a future? if you cannot give them education and set them up for success in life. You are simply creating poverty. The blame lies with sex. People don't control it and they breed poverty. This is the matrix, guys. The matrix meaning that people are willing to procreate just for the sake of procreation, just to perpetuate poverty. That is why, guys, yoga gives you an understanding of all these things. You in a way see the world from a universal level. You see the world from a detached perspective. You have the opportunity to pause and stop chasing illusory goals and participating in the red race for survival. You can engage in yoga, but for that guys, you need a certain level of righteousness. In yoga this is called Sukriti. It is a certain threshold of righteousness that allows you to practice yoga. Because if you are so poor, that you have to suffer and struggle for survival. You cannot practice yoga because you don't have time for it. When I talk about poverty, I mainly mean a poor consciousness. Many people's consciousness is blocked. They don't even understand these things because their consciousness is trapped in the heavy layers of material covering, which in yoga is called the gunas. There are three gunas. We'll talk about them sometime. Three main energies. Those who practice yoga are in the highest guna. This is the guna of sattva guna. There are, so to speak, three main energies. Sattva, Rajas, Tamas. So guys, Tamas is drug addicts and alcoholics, criminals, the lowest class of people with low consciousness, low vibrations. It is very difficult to break free from this lower energy because you sink deeper and deeper into it. The second guna is Rajas which represents materialists. These are the ones who strive for material dominance, those who want to settle in this world and attain material prosperity. These are scientists, engineers, well, and all other people engaged in business, commerce, and the majority of people. All these guys is Rajas. Sattva Guna is education, writers, thinkers, yogis, intellectuals. That's all guys Sattva Guna. It is right thinking, understanding of one's own future and planning for the future. It is not causing inconvenience to others. And by the way, semen retention is also a form of asketism. So this also can be attributed to Sattva Guna. On the path of yoga, there are no losses. There are certain risks where you can deviate from the path and degrade. Such a risk also exists. But in general, Yoga is a path upwards. It is a path above the material world. It is a challenging path. But on this path, there are no losses. That's it, guys. That's my message for today. Thank you for watching. Thank God. Good luck. Bye.